why do you think personally us as humans obviously we we need we, we have the need to want to be associated with something and i think that's so interesting where with democrats equals blue republicans equals red that's a difficult question well, you know we all want to belong to <sighs> some it. respect and i think that uh, we all want to be near people who think like us mm-hmm. and i think as long as you can provide a label uh, and so people could gather and feel safe in their in their beliefs. Uh, I think that's what people feel comfortable with. Now, I, I agree with you. You have to be outside your comfort zone uh, in order to be a, 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 in a in order to affect change. I think you have to with be an open mind to be open minded. You have to be able to see both sides. And I feel that I am one of those people who invites both right and left. Uh, points of opinion right. to the table and talk to me about any issue I'm not right. afraid to tackle anything uh, and I'm a, not afraid to challenge my own views on yes. topics and what do you think that hit what is it that you know, you've seen all these champions what is it that that drive that spark everyone says that he was struggling failures and that that's it. but they are we see that common trait and that's another question I listed um, obviously a very tough question. What do you feel that, you know, what if you haven't had a tragedy in your life? What if you have a golden spoon in your mouth and have everything it is? Um, is it wrong to say that that person can still have that incredible and drive? They can. Where do you of feel course. that it comes from? Because you hear it all. How bad do you I, want I, I, All these motivational speeches. It, it, it's, is it, have you had been in this for almost thir- over 30 years? Is it a genetic disposition? Is it? <laughs> 35 years. I've, I've encountered a range of, of people in the sport of wrestling, and it's probably the same in a lot of other sports, where they, they come from a, a, an array of backgrounds that are, that are very diverse. Nonetheless, if we are the professionals, all we have to say is, has Zillow, Redfin, or Trulia ever been inside your home? I've been in your home. I've been in your neighbor's home. All the other homes that sold in your neighborhood. So the true... Uh, the true knowledge comes from a living, breathing agent who is a specialist. So we, uh, whenever a client comes to us and says, uh, we see this on Zillow, okay, great. Uh, well, we're not, we don't have to defend why Zillow doesn't have the most accurate information. We just begin to provide them with the most accurate information. And then they start to see that, oh, wow, uh, it, there is a complete lag or uh, misappropriation of data and facts and etc. Because one is a lead generation tool, and for us, we're providing um, just raw information that is live to the market. So um, you know, we just have to kind of show our value at the end of the day to every client. Yes. Yes. Same as yes. District San Jose. You know what? Just go live. Just go, go live. Okay. We're natural. Five minutes. Yeah. Yes, five to start. Okay. Yes, start the right now process. Two, one. Cool, perfect, and boom, we're live. I'm with Osh Kora, 27th District, San Jose State Assembly Member. We want to break down for you, bring you guys some value, just talk about what is a State Assembly Member, what does yeah. he do? I want to learn at the same time, so thank you guys for you guys that are joining us. If you ask any questions, we'll get to them at the end, if we can, and try our best, and we'll be sharing this, uploading it later, but Ash, take the floor, educate me, let's uh, let's learn a little bit today from the matter oh, yeah. so. Um, a lot of us learn when we go to school about federal government, we learn about the president, the Supreme Court, we learn about the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate, the Congress, right? And so the state assembly is the state level part of that same system, but for the state jurisdiction. Right. And so similar, um, similar to the federal government. <laughs> Dealing with parents, and, and I said two different uh, worlds, right? Because dealing with parents when, and for those parents who are listening, when uh, you're a coach, and then dealing with parents, I don't know which one's worse. Yeah. Uh, dealing with parents when it's, you know, the back to school night, um, etc. You either have those parents that are, that are working so damn hard they can't even show up to anything, uh-huh. right? And then you have those parents that are way more involved than they should be on a level that they're scrutinizing, ca- you know, causing drama in that way. <sighs> you, you've been in the military. You, I don't yes. have to tell you on how, how to deal with that, but um, what, what are your thoughts there, at least for any parents that 
well, for me, I think the, the, the key is communication. And I yes. think that, that if you are very clear in your expectations and you communicate that, really? uh, I think that I have very few problems. And, and, and I think, I don't know if that's by design or just the, the lack of the draw. Uh, but I think that when a problem arises, I have no problem meeting with a parent and sitting there. American Pacific Islanders are just equally diverse, great area, great culture, and then you get you need great bosses like this to hold things down and keep things uh, doing very well. But it's an amazing school. There's cultural representation from around the world, which makes it very strong. The AP participation was at close to 70 percent, right? From certain sources, mathematics and English is like better than the district and the state. Eastside Union High School District, they're ranked number one out of the 18 schools. So. Um, no, bi no bias here as alumni. Uh, so, uh, let's see, almost a 98% graduation rate, 71% college readiness rate. So pretty, That's very, insane. very high. 94% college going rate, which is also wow. very high, yeah. Wow. I'll ask awesome. you, well, after we take a quick tour, we'll sit down and talk a little more, and then I'll ask her more stories about, um, you know, just for example, uh, we had another um, great student go to Stanford and was in the paper, I saw some news and I was doing my homework on you. Tons of stories, but, but we'll, we'll get to them then. This is the entry building, and that's where uh, most people will enter it from this side. And uh, usually Nishan Saab is in front of the Gurdwara. This, this part was 40 acres. Uh, well, actually it was a 60 acre, but Mirillo was, uh, Mirillo Avenue was cutting through it. Right. And so we bought everything east of Mirillo, which is the Gurdwara Avenue now. Uh, 40 acres east of Marilla. It all started with a vision, right? And then... Yeah. Now you have And, and we ended up with this uh, waterfall because we had to terrace the the, the, the uh, sloping land. And rather than having a big drop here, yeah. you know, we made a waterfall. The waterfallers. Yeah. Adapt. Just yeah. figure, find a way. <laughs> And I'm talking about anger, like when people try to pick a fight with you, you know? And jiu-jitsu gives you the opportunity to like speak with that person and, and reason with them without having to hurt them. And 100% of the times that it's happened to me, which has been about three times, the person always calms, uh, calms down 100%. I usually stand up and I help them up and they shake my hand. So it's, it's amazing the power that jiu-jitsu can give you yeah. um, and, and give other people even if they don't realize it's, it's helping them. Exactly. You know? That's the beautiful thing. Cause what's happening there is is ego, right? And that's so and much so it. much off the, the the mat there that it, what it does is essentially it, it, it humble it humbles people. Yeah. We all been tapped. We're all gonna be tapped. But to let the ego go and just tap, and I'm gonna learn from this kind of translates yeah. to life, right? In that way that. Uh, in, uh, in the west side of San Jose. Uh, and the Delmani Canaring uh, area okay. it doesn't uh, exist any longer. We have condos there, beautiful okay. condos. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing that is left of the uh, uh, area that I grew up in is the, is the water tower. It's a beautiful reminder yeah. of uh, where my parents uh, made a living and provided a home for me. It's over by a. And what's the closest uh, thing to there? Uh, Orchard Supply is still there. Okay. Orchard okay. Supply is still there. Okay. And uh, the old railroad tracks are still there. Okay. Omar's mother still lives there. <laughs> she does. Yeah. Uh, Omar still lives there. Omar's a great pull in there. And the Gardner Community Center is still there. Okay. And, and there's still a lot of issues there. And I love that area. Okay. But uh, what was beautiful about that area is that it was a very immigrant community, it was a very close knit community. And. Uh, Your, your money and, and property can be passed on to your, your friends, family, charities, whatever, um, and avoid probate. Probate is where you have to take the fact of your death into the court system. If you don't have a will, you have to have the court approve of what's happening with your things going to your people. Right. That can be very time uh, consumpting. Um, that can also be very costly. As an example, um, there are statutory fees for uh, probating someone's estate. Um, and I was looking at numbers, you know, this is San Jose. It's not hard for someone to be worth $2 million. 
who have an a, a average house, I think I saw on the news this morning, 1.3 million. Right. It was a median price of a house in the South Bay. So to be worth $2 million is not too hard to imagine. Um, if you were worth $2 million upon death, you'd have a $22,000 statutory fee.